Hello, this is Arden Kirkland. This screencast is one of a series to look at some different tools I tried out in March of 2009 to create demo collections of the Vassar College Costume Collection. This is our second screencast looking at Omeka. We've already looked at the main public view and now we're just going to take a special look at the exhibit view within Omeka. So here we are at the home page and you'll notice there's a different featured item featured item being shown this time. Um, but now we're going to go straight to the exhibit. So we'll click on Browse Exhibits. Um, if we had more than one exhibit, they'd all be listed here. In our case, we only have one, so it makes our choice pretty simple. Uh, highlights of the Vassar College Costume Collection. We'll click on that. And now it takes us to a kind of table of contents and a brief description of that. So this is all um, what you can vary, you know, these are all fields that you are given the option to fill in as you choose. Um, we'll start with the introduction. So we'll click on that. In this case, the introduction is just text. What I did for, for this project was just to kind of cut and paste some text from an exhibition we did with the collection many years ago, um, at least probably about 15 years ago now. Um, and, and also, you know, update it with some new information, but, um, but just to kind of show, you know, using from um, some past exhibit information, we thought we'd fill this in. So here's just a basic introduction, a little boring, I probably could have put some images in, but let's go to the next section to see how the images come into play. So 19th century is our next section. If we click on that, now you'll see um, a list of each of the pages within this section. So there's a page for each uh, kind of a showcase of each um, item. Now I chose to set it up that way just again as a very simple example. This could be more thematic. It doesn't have to be related to each item and you could actually have multiple items um, in each page, uh, multiple objects kind of comparing and contrasting each of them. Um, which I see is a really great tool, particularly for students to be able to use. So we're at, the, at our first page in this section, which is the 1854 wedding dress. In this case, it's a very uh, small image, and then some text to go along with it. Um, pretty simple, straightforward. If I want to see more about this object, I can click on it, and I'll come to the page for the item, so showing all its metadata. If I scroll down, the image is at the bottom. There it is. Um, and I can click on it to see it larger. I can also zoom in a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit. Okay, now let's go back. I also wanted to point out um, that in this page that shows all the metadata, it also gives you a citation so, so that, again, for student use, it would be very easy to cut and paste this citation into a paper that they were doing if they were discussing this object in their paper and sharing how they had seen it presented online. Now we'll go back again, back to our exhibit. Okay, now I can either, um, you know, I can select other objects in this section, I could, you know, my next page is going to be the teal taffeta page. So let's click on next page, and here we are. Um, you'll see that I chose a slightly different layout for this than for the last dress. This has a little grid of multiple images, so we're seeing different views, including interior views of this garment. Again, a little more text. Um, I can go back to the previous page, I can go to the next page. Uh, let's try that. Now here's an even different layout. This is a layout that we're given one large uh, vertical image and then several smaller images on the side. In this case, my image got cut off a little bit. That's something that I could tweak. Um, pretty easily, but again, I'm, I'm trying to show the just straight out of the box version here. 
It also gives a small caption to that large image and then launches into my, um, my text. The caption is coming straight from the image itself, from the item page. My text here is coming is specifically for my exhibit. And again, I could click on any of these to go to the metadata for that object and to see a much larger um, image of that object. But we'll go back. Now this time, instead of going to the next page, we're going to skip and show you how you can just select from your uh, kind of table of contents here, and in this case it's taking me straight, skipping over the brown wall, going straight to the 1879 ensemble. And so again, here's a different layout that has a, a large vertical and a small thumbnail, and then my text in here. So just showing you some of the different layouts. They're not necessarily, you know, in terms of design, I probably would want to play around with the layout a little bit. But again, to show just straight out of the box something that students could easily access and have a slight amount of design control over, um, it's, it, there are some good features. Uh, oh, one thing I didn't point out before, one thing I don't like about this setup is you'll notice that, um, you know, these are all pages in my 19th century part of my exhibit, um, but they're, they're being listed under all of the main um, headers in the entire exhibit. So it, to me, it looks like these would belong under 20th century, but obviously an 1854 dress is not from the 20th century. So, so that's a, a little quirk of that. Um, again, there's probably a workaround for that, but um, just in the simple setup, that's what happens. Let's go, let's click on 20th century to see our next section. And here we have three objects in 